Hello everyone, welcome back to Aria Adventures. In today's video, we will solve a reversing challenge from Edda CTF, which was last weekend. It had a really cool reversing challenge, which I would show in this video. Uh, the name of the challenge was Elvish Line. Uh, if we could see what we get in the uh, challenge, it was a, se uh, a zip file, uh, which was named as Elves. And after extracting it, we get a directory named as Elves. If we go inside of that directory, and do a directory listing we see that we have 730 files uh, to be specific only 728 are binary files so all of these also have the same size we can see like binary 7 binary 70 so we have almost 728 binary files to uh, parse or reverse so that is not uh, a fun time to do but uh, let's we have to start somewhere so let's open one of the files in a disassembler like binary ninja and let's jump to the start of the function so we can see that there is not much code and there is only one function so here we can see that it does a syscall uh, which is just does a nano sleep syscall for sleeping it and then we see that here it moves some value from rax and XORs it with some value uh, hex D and it compares it with 64 and if it is uh, if it is equal then it jumps here and uh, does a return uh, does an exit with a exit code as 0 and if it is not equal then it exits with an exit code of 1 so which means uh, we need to uh, we need to make the program go here and let's open another binary just for comparison uh, some other binary And we can see that it has almost the same code. The, we can see that the nano sleep and then the same pattern. The uh, move uh, byte from Rx, uh, XOR it with something and do a compare and the same pattern here. So it was clear that all of these binaries will have the same pattern. Uh, move a byte, XOR it and compare. So now the question is how can we parse all of these binaries because doing it by hand for 728 binaries. It's a time consuming task, so we do not want to do that. Uh, all we need to do is just uh, extract these XOR values and these compare values, and then we can just do an XOR of these two values because XOR is a reversible operation and get get the whatever should be the correct input. So for that, I'm going to use Capstone. So if you don't know, Capstone is a Python library. Uh, which can be used for disassembling binaries. It has bindings for C, C++ and Rust and many other languages. So I wrote a simple Python script here. So first of all, I will import Capstone and maybe we would need OS. So I imported it. Then I created a variable, the file counts. This is the count of how many binaries we have in the file. And I created file names because if you would see we have the file name in the form binary and the number from 0 to 727 so i created all of the file names and uh, these uh, these uh, addresses uh, i got it from let's open binary ninja again and uh, when i press space so we can see that uh, this instruction the xor is at 40 uh, let me copy these two here so that we can see clearly uh, the XOR instruction is at 401019 and the compare is at 401010C. So I copied both of them. Uh, I have copied 1F instead of 1C because we need to uh, disassemble uh, before this instruction like this JNE. So I have copied here 1F. But as you can see the address is 401019 and I have written uh, 01019 uh, without the 4. Uh, because we actually need the file offset this 40 uh, with the 4 this is actually a virtual offset so we can uh, do some math and calculate the file offset but and ida also tells you that but what i like to do is just remove the 4 and most of the in most of the cases it just works and it was the case here as well i just removed 4 and it worked perfectly so uh, these are the addresses now 
I created an output variable which will hold the flag or whatever the text that would be will be given into uh, all of these binaries. Then this is the most important instruction here. Uh, this engine, which is a disassembly engine, equals to capstone.cs. This is actually initializing the capstone engine, and we have to pass two arguments. The first one is uh, CS arch x86. So we uh, set the architecture to be x86 and the mode is 64 because we know that all of these binaries are 64 bit architecture then for each and every file in file names that we created here we open the file and read only those specific bytes from the uh, instruction start and the instruction end that is only the XOR and the compare instruction then we disassemble it uh, the disassembly engine that we initialize above we just have to call disassem with the data whatever we want to disassemble and this is some virtual offset uh, in this place it doesn't matter because we don't care about the addresses we just want to uh, get the values so we can give any value here then i created two variables uh, xor val and compare val which will hold the xor value and the compare value which will be extracted from the binary then for each and every uh, for the disassembly uh, because this is an iterator so we will iterate all of the instructions from it i created an instruction the decoding mnemonic this mnemonic will have these uh, xor compare and all of this mnemonics and the opster will have this like dl uh, comma hex 35 so i created an instruction out of it then uh, for for each and every instruction if the instruction is an xor if there is an xor in the instructions uh, as you can see it here we are looking for this instruction so if it has an XOR what we do is I do a split uh, of the instruction and take the last last uh, item of it so if we split the last item would be our number that we want and then we replace it uh, the 0x with nothing and convert it into an int with 16 which just means that we just extract the number and convert it into an integer and store it in the XOR well. And I do the same with the compare instruction. We do the same thing, just extract the number and convert it into an integer. Else, if the instruction is not an XOR or a compare, then we would have to look, maybe it has some add instruction or sub instruction. So I added this else statement. And finally, we just compare that, assert that both of this XOR value and compare value has something, which means that the disassembly was perfect. And now because we have the values and the XOR is a reversible operation we can just do an XOR of both of the values and store it in an uh, append it at the output variable which we define above and at the end finally we will just print out the output so all we need to do is just run this script and uh, get the flag but on my windows system i don't have capstone so i would have to copy the script into the linux here all right so i have copied the script from my windows machine into my linux vm uh, you can see it and this is the same script that we just wrote and also i have copied all of the binary files uh, on my linux vm and now all we need to do is just run this uh, python script that we just wrote with python and instantly it gave us the output and we can see clearly see that the flag is here so we got the flag and this was actually the correct flag it was a 200 point challenge so we got 200 points for this uh, so that's all for the video. Thank you for watching. Keep hacking and stay awesome.